Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between, and welcome back to a video where today people got a little too silly on Twitter. <laughs> Who would have thought? It, it all revolves around artificial intelligence, tech YouTubers, and outrage, flames, fire everywhere because a tech YouTuber did their job. Isn't that fun? So, this all revolves around a product, a startup product from a company called Humane called the AI Pin. And it's essentially just a little thing that looks like a scale that rests on your breasticles and does essentially everything a phone does, except slower and more inconveniently. And it was reviewed by the tech YouTuber Marcus Brownlee, who many of you might know, but if you don't, here he is. Go ahead. Take a screenshot, send it to your mother. That is Marcus Brownlee, and he's a tech YouTuber who's been in the game for a long time. In fact, actually, if you go to his oldest, you can see... <laughs> oh, look at him, look at little baby man! Look at little Goo Goo Gaga baby man! Yeah, he's been doing this since he was, like, in the womb. And I respect that. I actually highly respect that grind and wish I got into YouTube sooner. But regardless, he reviewed a product that I've actually seen before. Because I actually saw a video from Danny Gonzalez around two months ago reviewing the, like, trailer for this product before it actually came out. And in it, the intro really just says it all. New technology truly fascinates me. A new gadget being introduced to the world has the potential to change the way we live, learn, and communicate. Or, more interestingly, it could flop and become a laughing stock of the internet. Which is why a few weeks ago, I was thrilled to discover the unveiling for a project called the Humane AI Pin. This might be the worst product presentation I've ever seen for one of the strangest products I've ever seen. And I don't know about you guys, but I think you really freaking liked it. <laughs> God. But in Danny G's video, he essentially just breaks down the only trailer that was out for the Humane AI pin at the time. And he makes some interesting points. He notices some features, such as, um... The, the lack there of any at all. Their mission is building innovative technology that feels familiar, natural, and human. Okay, first thing that's sticking out to me is that none of those words were useful. And I find it really funny that this company just kind of uses a bunch of tech guru language to try and make it seem like they're a lot more sophisticated than just a glorified clock you wear on your breast. Like, and, and clock, by the way, you might have noticed, oh my god, a feature? Yeah, he does actually notice one of the features when going through the initial video. Engagement comes through your touch, voice, gesture or the laser ink display whoa wait okay holy cow we have a feature it actually does something can you believe it guys i can't think of a single other way that people could display the current time of their area unless they bought a 700 hundred dollar pin that you wear on your booby but anyways let's move from danny g all the way to marcus because he actually made a post on his twitter five days ago saying i have many thoughts with an image of the humane ai pin and then later posted a video to his channel called <laughs> the worst product i've ever reviewed for now i i appreciate the optimism that he knows it could get so much worse from here but i also <laughs> appreciate his honesty which many people do not feel the same way which is wild to me because like are you mad that a tech reviewer reviewed technology? That's what a review is for. If it's bad, he's gonna say it's bad. I have so many more thoughts on that that I'm gonna say at the end of this video because there is a lot more that happens that I need to comment on. But first, I wanna show you just part of the intro to his video because even though he's saying the tech is bad, he's still so nice about it. Like, give this a quick watch. All right, so this is the Humane AI Pin. It is a brand new product and a really, really interesting form factor of an ultra futuristic wearable computer. So in a time of all these crazy gadgets and Vision Pro and wearable glasses, it's so sick that we get so many genuinely new first generation products like this to give a shot. Unfortunately, it's also the new worst product I think I've ever reviewed it's in its current state. There's just so many things bad about it. And that's shocking. You know it's a problem when a guy who's been reviewing technology longer than some people on TikTok have been alive, and he said it's the worst thing he's ever reviewed, you've made a piece of garbage and sold it for $700. But the thing is, even despite the fact that they're selling us essentially like a glorified sundial you can wear on your breast, Marcus was so nice! <laughs> He was so chill about it. He explained that as a revolutionary piece of technology and that it's just not great in its current state, which I don't see a lie. <laughs> it's a new piece of technology. We're still working the kinks out right now. And I, I think that's a great thing that he managed to find a way to spin it in a way that is honest and yet also critical because 
that's what that's what a tech company would need they need that type of critique so they know how to turn things around and make a better product next time and you can tell the tech bros don't have the ability to sit down for longer than 30 seconds without having chat gpt summarize it for them because there's even segments of the video where he praises it for doing it's sort of the thing it said it would do properly ish <laughs> and it also is multimodal so that means it can look at the camera and see things and interact with the world around you so look and tell me what you see so it'll scan the room, use the cloud again. That little noise was it taking a little image, sending that image to the cloud, analyzing it, getting it back. I also appreciate his ability to yap while it's loading because it has the processing power of like a TI-84 calculator. Then deciding what to tell me. You are sitting in front of a camera and a laptop. The camera is on a tripod and pointed at you. The laptop is open and you are looking at it. There are three pictures of dogs on the wall behind you. There is a window to the left of the camera. There is a boom mic on the table in front of you. There is a red carpet on the floor. Great. You know, you know it's good. You know he just reviewed some absolute futuristic technology when his only response to it is... Great. And of course, what happened was people went to Twitter because that's what you do when you're angry. That's the most reasonable thing to do. That's what the therapist told me to do. And one of the big ones, the one that went viral, is from Daniel Vassalo that said, I find it distasteful, almost unethical, to say this when you have 18 million subscribers. Hard to explain why, but with great reach comes great responsibility. Okay, Uncle Ben. Potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness. First, do no harm. Like, what? What am I looking at? Like, oh no! Uh, uh, my $250 million startup company didn't make a good product and the tech YouTuber said it was bad? What are we gonna do now? I don't know, make a better product. Like, <laughs> what? It's not like him posting this video was revolutionary information. Like, we knew it wasn't gonna be good before it even came out. People were making videos all over YouTube like, hey, look at this product that uh, does nothing. And then whenever we ask what it does, they're like, it's the future and revolutionary. You're literally the physical incarnation of a rug pull scam. <laughs> like, what? However, I can see how a future version of it could be useful. Like, I see how it's kind of cool looking. I'd like a little Cortana on me. But at the same time, I'm not going to pay 700 bucks for a glorified sundial on my boobie. And of course, Marcus actually came and defended himself in this tweet. He actually responded to the initial tweet saying, we disagree on what my job is. And then he responded with, why didn't you use the same sensational title on X? This, this was honest. The YouTube title wasn't. And in the post, he actually says, this clip is 99% of my my experience with the pin doing something you could already do on your phone but slower more annoying less reliable and accurate and turns out smartphones are pretty incredible and like yeah that's what he said in the vidya i would even argue that what he said in the tweet is meaner than the video like did this guy even read the initial tweet or did he have chat gpt read it for him like the only problem is he had a bit of a clickbaity esque title but he's being honest in the title too like I, I get that like the whole idea oh Thanks, Steve22, for subscribing while I'm in the middle of recording, Steven. <laughs> I hope he's still subscribed by the time this video gets posted because I'm keeping this in. But I was going through this Daniel Vassalo guy's Twitter and he is defending this pin to his dying breath. He actually re quote retweeted a tweet that says, I'm sad to see everyone pile on humane. Pile on humane. Okay. Hardworking people trying to build cool shit deserve our respect. Often they'll fail. Sometimes badly. But we need them to keep trying. All the greats have been there. Jobs made a computer nobody wanted it next. And then he made the iPhone. And he said exactly. It's like shaming a fallen soldier. God damn it. Can we get a moment of silence for the humane pin for being shit? It's truly sad to see. What do you mean? It's like shaming a fallen soldier. Like, I'm not going to congratulate someone for making a mighty fine looking shit in the toilet and hoping to make a better one next time. He made a bad product and people are saying it's bad. Like, I would understand the feedback from people like Daniel if they were like these people at Humane were getting doxxed or harassed or like have an airstrike towards their building. But they're just simply being critiqued for making a bad product and people are like, you should be getting on your knees and taking their pants off. No! And I don't see other people complaining about people like The Verge making reviews on this or other content creators making reviews on this or even Danny Gonzalez's video, which has more views than Marcus's video does. Um, actually, we're gonna have a community note real quick. Uh, the video actually has the literal same amount of views as the Marcus Brownlee video, but that doesn't change my point at all. <laughs> and Twitter's got me feeling like they're drama alert right now because they got some false information that's been spreading around as well. I saw a tweet that someone, like, screenshotted and reposted that said they were fired from Humane because they were in charge of our influencer marketing. They sent Marcus Brownlee one of the pins, and about 17 minutes after his review was posted, he got a message in Slack letting him know he was terminated. And I was like, wow! 
That's horrible. I can see where people will be mad. But then I went and checked the account of this another Cohen fella, and he seems like he's just an like a a joke account. Fellas, is it unethical to be honest? He's literally siding with Marcus and also talking about how he didn't understand the pin or anything about it. So I think that's a lie. I think we might have had some misinformation spread on the internet, which is crazy. I never would have expected that to happen. And of course, I just wanted to cover that because I don't want people to come in the comments and be like, look, he actually did harm. He didn't. <laughs> people are just bitches on internet. People are just bitches on internet. <laughs> What am I, a goddamn caveman? Ignore that. You know what I meant. I especially love this clip from XQC stream where he was watching the Marcus video and he made this comment. Dude, this is obviously oh my God. very brand new for people, but I think to be- Yo, your chat, I guess I'm not schizo chat, I swear, I swear chat. I'm, Jazz, I'm gonna go take the bus. <laughs> oh! What's in front of me? What's in front of me? For being a very strange individual, he can never fail to make me laugh when he starts swinging his arms around and making funny noises like a clown at a circus. But regardless, I'm going to be wrapping this video up for now because that's about it with the situation. It's absolutely goofy and I had to add my two cents while also informing you guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know your thoughts on this as well. Do you think Marcus should burn in hell for an eternity for covering a topic? Or do you think he's not exactly in the wrong here for doing his job? <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Of course, subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you in what I make next. And as always, adios, arrivederci, goodbye, good night, and um, hey Siri, uh, send the bomb to the Pentagon. Wait, don't actually, oh my god, mine activated. Don't bomb the Pentagon, please. Hello and welcome to an episode of Evan on the Toilet, where I'm going to be adding a little bit of input and context to what's going on the next day after everything went down with Marcus Brownlee and Humane AI. I actually watched through a video that he recently put out asking if bad reviews kill bad products or products that are supposedly bad and he makes some really really outstanding points by the way i hope you're okay with me recording this on the toilet um i had good ideas and i didn't want to lose them and have them come out of my head so here we are right now basically what he said in the video is he brings up a car that he reviewed in the past that when he had a bad experience with it and he reviewed it and it ended up being a bad review the company months later ended up kind of going on life support like it was on its way out like as of right now it's dying and so he talks about now the Humane AI pin and how if the product is good, if the pin itself is a good product, a bad review wouldn't kill it. And I think that's an amazing point. That's the, literally exactly the point I was trying to make in the video, but I don't have the uh, brain power or IQ level to properly alliterate myself. But I, I think that is such an amazing point. And Marquez also makes a point in the video that I loved, I loved so much. He says this. But the thing about reviews is if they're not honest then they're basically useless and literally I, it's funny because i said the same thing in the video that you just watched so i think that's great that we are on the same page there and then he brings up a product that he reviewed in the past the razor phone and how he gave it a terrible review and he pointed out things that are wrong with it and then years later he went to a new meeting for the second razor phone and they specifically talked to him about the changes they made because of his review that's what a review is for. They did the thing, the right thing. Like that's great. And the humane AI pin and that entire humane company should do the exact same thing. Learn from their mistakes and do something good with it. Ugh. And he finally wraps the video up with some interesting points that I agree with, but I highly recommend you go watch his video because he made it and I am in a bathroom right now. So there's not exactly some high quality stuff coming out on my end. And I highly recommend giving Marcus some support, but he makes great points and they're similar to what I made. So. I'll see you at the computer. I came all the way back to my computer and then realized that like, I'm done talking. I made all my points. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being absolutely outstanding. Subscribe, as I said, if you're new. Like the video if you liked it and I'll see him whatever I make next. Thank you guys for being absolutely outstanding. And as I said a few minutes ago, adios, arrivederci, goodbye, good night. And cut my boy Marquez some slack.